I'm going to be going through our review of almost 21 different pairs of shoes. Welcome to Trail Talks with Ben. One year ago, we were on the Appalachian Trail and we did it with our family of eight. Seven of us walked it, which means that over the course of that 2200 miles, we went through three pairs of shoes each for a total of 21 different pairs of shoes. So I feel like that gives us a pretty unique experience and perspective because we had like such a wide range of shoe experiences and like test data. So I don't know why it's taking me so long to make this video. I have all these shoes like right over here that we've used that I've actually just been storing. When we started hiking the trail, we had already switched from boots to like trail runners. Because we were buying so many different pairs of shoes, we basically bought like whatever was on clearance and sale from REI or other online retailers. This is pretty gnarly. I don't know if I even want to get my outdoor bricks here dirty. All right, what do we got here? These shoes were beforehand. So this is basically gonna be a review between Merrill shoes and ultra shoes. These were all the shoes that we started off with and all of these are Merrells with the exception of this pair that are a pair of North Face shoes that Philea, our seven year old at the time, used. So this right here, which is the Merrell Moab ventilator, has been my go-to shoe for most of the last 15 years. Every single hike that I've done was in this shoe. And it was great. I had just transitioned from hiking boots to hiking shoes, and I was sold on that idea. And this was one of the leading shoes in terms of ventilation, so I loved it. So when we started the AT, this is what I knew, so I started off with a pair of these. And about 300 miles in, in Damascus, Virginia, I bought my first pair of Ultra shoes. This right here is the exact pair that I bought. It's the Ultra Temp. When I wore them out of Damascus, it was like hard to explain how unbelievable the difference was from my previous shoes. It felt like I was like walking on clouds and cheating. And when you're first starting a through hike, the thing that hurt the most for me all the time was feet. I mean, everything hurts in a way, like your legs and your back and your shoulders from your backpack. But the biggest complaint at the end of the day was how bad my feet hurt. For all of us, our feet hurt. And after I switched to these shoes, all I know is when I would get to my campsite at the end of the night, I usually just had to take off my shoes. With these shoes, I just didn't feel that way. When I got at the end of the night to the campsite, I just didn't mind keeping them on. So instantly, like after like two or three days, I contacted Ultra and I said, hey, we have this large family, we're hiking, would you help us out? They said, we'll send you free pairs. And I was just blown away because that was a huge help and financial relief for our family. So basically, these were the shoes that we started off with. I have the rest of the Merrells over there I'm gonna show you. And we put 800 miles on our first pair of shoes. And 800 miles is a ton. I'm really happy with that. Like, this isn't one of those reviews to like bitch about Merrells or say they suck or anything like that. Our next 950 miles were done in these Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. Now, the first day we ever wore these shoes, we ran a marathon in them and we also walked through the rocks of Pennsylvania in these things. And finally, for the last 450 miles, we switched to the Ultra Temps. So this is what we went through New Hampshire and Maine with. By the way, this is not a paid advertisement in any way, shape, or form. Ultra has sent us some free shoes. We are not under any agreement or obligation to say anything or to point you in their direction. I wanna go through the pros and cons of Ultra that we've experienced. 
So there's like two main things that make Ultra shoes really unique. And the first thing is it's called a zero drop shoe. So you can see it says that. But what that means is it's actually completely flat. So normal shoes have a raised heel, which changes the way you walk. And it actually means more impact on your knees, in my opinion. So this is very flat. It's as if you were walking barefoot, essentially. So the idea very simply behind that is it's a more natural stride for your foot, for your knees, for your back. The other thing about these shoes is that they are so light and flexible. Now, when I first got into backpacking, I was sold on these like heavy hiking boots because everyone was talking about support. But what I noticed about all the support that comes with the rigidity and weight of hiking boots is that support comes at a cost because your foot is actually a very flexible and dynamic object. So the more rigid the shoe, the more blisters you get. Now, in switching to ultras, I don't know if I could say that we didn't get blisters once, but we didn't deal with it like at all. And you're taking care of your feet, and especially things like blisters, are such a huge thing on a through hike or on any long distance hike, that to just not have to deal with it, they just feel so nice on your foot. And it was just so easy walking with them. Another thing I liked about really all the ultras that I tried was they were so breathable. The whole reason why I got that Merrill ventilator was because I had sweaty feet. No matter what I did, I would always get sweaty feet. And something about how these were ventilated, it really helped because moisture in your foot while you're hiking is just one of the worst things that can happen. So I would change my socks maybe at least once a day to try and keep dry socks on. But I noticed that with these shoes, there were a lot of days that I didn't even have to do that, and that was really nice. Another thing about all the ultra hiking shoes is that they are gaiter compatible. So for those of you guys that don't know what a gaiter is, it's like a little sock or booty. You like put your foot through it, and then it kind of wraps around your shoe so that pebbles and leaves and sticks and stuff don't get in your sock. I think only three of us in our family wore those and they don't come with the shoe, but I really enjoyed it. Once I switched, it was like there was no going back. So it attaches back here with Velcro and then there's a little hook here on the front. Okay, this in my opinion is the singular best selling point or benefit that we experience with Ultras. So I told you Ultra has two main things that really distinguish them from every other shoe. The first being the zero drop. The second thing is the wide toe box. Kind of their philosophy in design is your foot naturally spreads out, your toes are spread out. And a lot of shoes, they kind of cramp your toes together, which changes the way you use them and it changes the position of your foot. So Ultra shoes, if you can see it, they have a much wider top up here. And what that does is it allows your toes to spread out and you're actually using your toe muscles and your feet very differently. And that has two main effects. One is physiological on your body. I think it's a more natural way to walk with your feet. And what I noticed was once again, less blisters and kind of less soreness with my foot. But the other one was actually financial and practical. In order to look at that, I wanna show you some of what happened to our other shoes on the trail. So these were my son's shoes, and this is the common thing that you see all over through hikers is the shoe gets blown out right here on the outside of the foot. So you can see right there, see how that threading has come out? This is the Merrill ventilator. See that? It just wore through right there. Here's another example. This was Dove's shoe. She was 17. This is the front right there. This is another example on the inside right here. Here's another example. You can see it just like fraying through right there on the front. And finally, this is Cami's Moab ventilator. You can see the rubber right there is just splitting and it's going right through. The problem isn't that the materials on these shoes are faulty. The problem, I think, is that they're the wrong shape for your foot. And every time you go downhill, you're putting so much pressure on the shoe. And if you think about it, if it's putting this much pressure on your shoe, imagine how much pressure it's putting on your toe or your foot. But what I notice is, 
We never had this problem with shoes. And most through hikers, their shoes will wear out somewhere in the front around the toes way before the soles run out. So it's kind of this funny thing. I mean, you know, it's like hike your own hike and I don't want to be critical of other people's shoes and everyone has their own opinion, but I would constantly see people that weren't wearing ultras and they had their toes split like on their shoe in the same place, like all over the place. It doesn't matter the brand and it happened to us. Okay, now I want to talk about some of the cons. I would be completely remiss to state the absolute obvious and that is that these shoes look dumb as hell. The colors are terrible. They kind of look like clown shoes a little bit. I think the temps are actually a lot better looking, but even some of them look kind of ridiculous. I guess it should go without saying that the looks should be secondary to the performance when you're out in the woods, but it's not like the looks don't matter at all, right? The second thing that I heard complained about a lot is that there was a lack of a rock plate. A lot of other shoe companies have kind of like a rigid, firm, either piece of plastic or rubber in the bottom that when you step on a rock, you're really not gonna feel it at all because it's gonna distribute the weight for the whole shoe. Now, Ultras, because they're so soft and flexible, if you step on a rock, there's a good chance that you're gonna feel it on your foot. Maybe not acutely, it's not gonna poke you, but it's still gonna put a unique pressure point. I didn't really notice a huge problem with that personally. These Lone Peaks right here are the exact shoes that we wore through Pennsylvania where the rocks are the worst. And there was times and it was pretty uncomfortable, I guess, but everyone is bitching about the rocks in Pennsylvania, no matter what you're wearing. Not just because of the, like, your actual foot or the rock plate, but because of your ankles and because of your knees and because it's slow and, and all those things. They do have this product that I don't know which shoe they include it with. You can see this thing right here. It's called a stone guard. These come with some of their shoes. They didn't come with ours. I don't know why, but it's just this thin piece of plastic. You could probably buy these. Some people were making these out of milk cartons. We never had anything like this and we were fine. Another con is the toe. Everyone that has ultras complains about how the toe comes off like, I swear, it's like the first day you wear them. I do not know why. I don't know why it sucks so bad. It's not really like a performance issue, but it sucks to even like look at. So we put shoe goo on like in the very beginning and that helped, but it still came off. I heard other people on trail complaining that their shoes didn't wear very long, like the ultra shoes wore out quickly. We didn't have that experience. I mean, I have seven pairs in front of me. These are Lone Peaks that we wore through Pennsylvania. You can see the bottoms. These right here went 950 miles, through Pennsylvania even. Now, let's go on to what I think is actually the biggest concern with these shoes. And this has to do with the uniqueness of their shape and the transition period that's required. When I first started wearing these specific shoes, my toes were like really tired for maybe the first week. Like I would walk like five or 10 miles and then like muscles I had in my toes that I didn't even know existed got tired. And it was just a weird feeling because my toes have never been tired. If you're gonna start off wearing these, you might wanna take into account that you might need to slowly merge into them or try them before you get on trail. Another thing that I've heard people complain about is because it's a flat shoe, I think it has relatively low arch support compared to what a lot of people need. Arch support isn't a major concern of ours and we have more of a desire to do a natural barefoot running style. So it fits more with at least our feet or our goals. And the final thing I'll say is this, is I think the sizing on the ultras is a little bit weird. I think it's a little bit big. Like I was wearing a 10 and a half in a Merrill hiker shoe. And then at one point I was wearing actually like a whole size bigger than 11 and a half in the temps. So if you do plan on switching, my suggestion is to try the sizing first, like at a shoe shop, before you just get them shipped to you, especially if you're on trail. The final thing I wanna do is I wanna very quickly compare the Lone Peaks to the Temps. I think the Temps look cooler, but actually having walked 950 miles in the Lone Peaks and only 450 miles in the Temps, 
I would recommend the Lone Peaks for two main reasons. One is, it actually has a lower profile right here. It's a thinner sole. This was a thicker sole. And what that meant was it was a little bit more unstable. I feel like I had more ankle twists in this shoe and I saw other members of our team like a little bit more unstable in this one than this shoe. The second thing is the wear. I'm gonna show you guys these shoes and show you exactly what it looks like to get this many miles on shoes. First off, all these shoes look like hell because these have been through 950 miles and these have been through 450 miles. So these have been through twice as many miles as these ones. So I want you to see like these ones have a little bit of a sole coming off. This one does have a hole right there. It's the only one that I can find with any of these. You can see the soles on these are still pretty okay looking. I mean, there's no holes. These were Felia's, our seven-year-old. She beat the hell out of shoes. You can see hers are worn out more than other people's. Okay, moving over to the temps. This material here is really thin. And what that means is there was a lot of wear on the toes and some of this part started to fray and separate where this rubber met here. Now I think they might have a new version of this shoe, but this material, it's just not as robust as the Lone Peaks, which is such a shame because they look so much better. If you haven't been on the Appalachian Trail or if you haven't been a through hiker, then you haven't seen this phenomenon, which is a very high percentage of through hikers are wearing Ultras right now. I mean, I don't know why, except for we had a great experience with the shoes, and I just feel like they're killing it in this market. Like, they, they hit on something. And it's not a very popular product. Like, if you go to running stores, not all running stores carry them or hiking stores. But in the through hiker community, when you see people that are really, really killing the miles, I don't want to say all of them are wearing ultras, but a very disproportionately high number of them. And then the closer you get to cities and towns and you're seeing day hikers, you see a lot of Merrells and light hikers and you see a lot of hiking boots. And I'm hoping to make other videos about that in the future. Okay, I'm interested. What are your experience with ultras and specifically the wide toe box and the zero drop and have you made the transition successfully or gone back to other shoes? I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more of them, leave a comment or a thumbs up. Thanks, we'll see you guys next time. Oh, and thanks to Ultra for sending us the shoes. These are for the thumbnails. Okay.